Hello, my name's Fran Sands. Uh, welcome to myboxingcoach.com. Something a little bit different for you in this video. So it's it's kind of in three parts. Um, we will cover a technical drill, a learning drill, a demonstration that will really help you understand the pivot, the pivot, and de use that pivot in both attack and defensive settings. It's really uh, sort of the pivot is really one of the most versatile skills that our boxer uses, um, and it's one of those things that becomes uh, an unconscious activity. It just you just do it, you know. Um, particularly uh, both the lead foot and the rear foot pivot. So it's really an important skill, um, regardless of you know our reasons, your reasons for watching this type of video, whether it's for fitness or for competition. This is something that really adds a lot to you, to your game. Um, I'm also going to answer a couple of questions. I get asked a lot of questions in the in the comments section. So I'm, each time I do a video, and I'm going to pick some questions out and, and try and answer them as best, you can, best I can. I've just started with a, with a couple uh, today with this video. Um, and then th there's a bit of advice I just want to give you that I consider I consider to be a really important piece of advice. So let's not hang around anymore. Um, have a little look at this. This is a, a coaching video on using the pivot in attack and defense modes. Right, in this coaching session, I'm gonna to talk to you about the pivot. Easily one of the most versatile skills that a boxer uses. You can pivot off the front foot, you can pivot off the rear foot. You can use it in all kinds of different circumstances. Today, uh, in this video, we're going to go through using the pivot during attack and defensive modes. Right. First off, let's just go through what the pivot is. So I'm going to be using this floor drill, um, central line. All you need from this really is the central line, uh, the line, lines coming off of 45 degrees now I've got them the second line coming off of probably I don't know about 30 degrees but you can have that at 45 degrees as well so they could be two parallel lines each side um, and they are about a foot a length of my foot apart a length of your foot because obviously you won't have my foot with you my foot will still be on the end of my leg um, so what we're going to do, let's just have a little look at what the pivot is. As you know, the line always goes on the, from the line on the floor, always goes from the toe on the front foot to the heel on the back foot, and we can pivot either way. So if I want to pivot to my lead leg side, I do a push off this back leg, front foot pivots around, and I end up with the line on the floor going from the toe to the heel. Let me show you again. Okay, line going from toe to heel. If I'm going to go that way, again, I want to end up on this line to push off that front foot. And again, push off the front foot. And you kind of fall backwards, if you know what I mean. You let gravity take, lift this leg so that you fall back into position. Line going from the toe to the heel. The common fault that people often do is that they push forward and their back foot comes up. So you get that type of thing. So your body weight tipples forward. Don't do that. Make sure that you, your body weight, if anything, is always falling back uh, onto that rear leg. And also make sure the front foot actually pivots. Lots of people, when I'm first teaching them this, they, that front foot tends to stay in position and then only comes around afterwards. It's got to drive at the same time as the push off the rear foot. So that's the demonstration. What we're gonna do is we're gonna layer on. This is about doing a drill. So what you would do with this, say three rounds of two minutes each round or three rounds of three minutes each round. And each one of the three things I show you here, you would do for a complete round, okay? So all I'm gonna do, starting at the most forward position, I'm going to push back, so to push off the front leg, we go back to that second point, and then we pivot round. Back to the start, 
push back, pivot round. Right? So that's one element. Second element is pushing forward and pivot round. Well, this looks boring. You know, in, in many respects it is, but it's critical that you are able to develop the muscle discipline, the, the, mind, the, the mental discipline to work through this stuff. Do it slowly and it just happens when you're doing your sparring and your bag work. It just becomes much more fluid. So, round number one, if I can show you what we end up doing. Start at the forward position. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. And so it goes. Not letting your body weight tip forward, making sure the front foot pivots. Then we move on to adding in a jab. So we combine a couple of skills. When I move backwards, it's a push off the front leg. As I do that push, my jab goes. So what you've got is one. So you've taken, you've retreated but you've thrown a shot out at the same time. So then we do our pivot after that. So it's one, two. One, two. And then forward. Push off the back leg. Jab goes out. One, two. One, two. The same again. You repeat that for a full round. One, two. And you slow everything down. One, one, two. So now you're getting used to combining the pushing and push out with a jab, and then using the pivot to change angle. And then finally, we throw a final shot. So we're doing shot with move, pivot, shot. One, two, three. One, two, three. Go that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you just do that slowly in a disciplined way along the drill line and you repeat and you repeat and you repeat and then you come back the next day and you do it again you keep the repetition going so that when you're doing your shadow boxing you can be moving around okay you can visualize the opponent and all of a sudden these little things happen It'll be unconscious. You'll go one, two, three, four. One, two, three. These little things will sneak into your style so that as you're developing your fitness on the bag and on shadow, everything's getting that little bit better. It's about linking skills one after another or overlapping them. Okay, that'll do for now, thanks. So there you go, a really important skill, really important that you put the time in, commit, practice daily to get that covered off. Couple of answers to, to questions. One, a technical question, and one, I guess, is about the questions not to ask me. Um, first off, the technical question I got asked about the front foot position in a boxing stance. So if you imagine my hands are, my, my hands are feet, feels weird. So my hands are, are feet. <laughs> um, so this is the lead foot, this is the rear foot. And I always have this, this principle that the front foot 
is 45 degrees all the time. And, and I think that that is a universal truth in boxing. I think everyone coaches that. The rear foot, I think you can actually vary all the way around pretty much. It, I don't get too worried about the position that the rear foot is in. Some coaches like to see it parallel to the front foot. Others will have it pushing off to the side. I've seen some top boxers with the front, the rear foot actually pointing backwards. So I don't worry too much. Front foot is what matters. And what uh, this person said is, why would you not have the lead foot pointed? Um, and he said he'd seen people coach it pointed. Now, I'm not sure where, where he's seen that coached with a front foot pointed forward. Maybe some other sport, maybe some MMA or... Or, or Muay Thai or, or something. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about those sports to know. But I know that one thing in boxing, never have your front foot uh, pointing towards the threat. In fact, it's one of the common faults of the stance. And it's particularly, it happens a lot when a, when a, when a novice boxer moves backwards. As they move backwards, the front foot points forward. Now you might think, well, what's the big deal? Why, why worry so much about that? I'll tell you why, and you can, you can try this out. Having the front foot at 45 degrees makes you really stable, especially, you know, obviously the rear foot's offset, so the line on the floor goes from the toe on the front foot to the heel on the back foot. I'll, I'll put a link down below to, the, to a boxing stance video that explains all of this. Now, where this really matters is when you're throwing a backhand, so for an orthodox when you're throwing a right hand, for a southpaw when you're throwing a left hand. If your front foot is pointed forwards, as you throw that rear hand, and you can, you'll be able to just try this out, as you throw that rear hand and your body rotates, there is a natural inclination for your body to fall over that way, okay? So it's a question of balance. If that front foot is pointed forward, you throw a backhand, you're more likely to tipple across that way. It will certainly mean you're not gonna be able to follow that backhand up with anything meaningful. If you keep it at 45 degrees, rotate the, the hips, bend the, bend the front leg, then absolutely you stay in position. You don't go off balance and you can bring other shots after it. So front foot position, always 45 degrees, non-negotiable. It has to be in that position in order for you to remain stable when you're throwing the backhand. That's question number one answered. I hope that was, I hope that was clear. Uh, question number two. I often get asked about self-defense. Would this work on the street? Um, okay, let's... I'm going to be totally honest here. I know this might not be the done thing on the internet. I am not a self-defense expert. I don't know enough about it. If I were to give you advice about self-defense, that would be reckless and irresponsible of me because I've not done any training myself in self-defense. It's, I believe it's something totally different than what I do. Um, so I'm not going to be, ever be able to answer any questions about self-defence. I can give a general opinion. Do I think that Bok being someone who's got skills in boxing is a positive in a, in a street fighting scenario? Then, yeah, I think broadly speaking, it probably would be. You're going to be fitter. You're going to be fit. You're going to be strong. You're going to be able to throw powerful punches and lots of them. You know, you're going to have some defensive awareness. But that being said, you know, proper self-defense expertise would probably create a situation where you wouldn't be in a position to have to use all of those boxing skills anyway. So um, I'm not a self-defense expert, so I will never offer an opinion about, about fighting on the street or self-defense situations. I'm sure there's lots of videos out there done by people with genuine expertise who can help on that one. Any questions you've got, do us a favour, start posting some questions and in each video, hopefully I'm going to get a video a week out, each video I'll pick a few questions and see if we can get some answers going on, on an ongoing basis. Final bit of advice, just a little bit of coaching advice. We've done the, that pivot drill before. Um, don't chase shortcuts. Don't, if you're already chasing shortcuts, stop. Um, in boxing, just like in anything else that's worthwhile doing, there's no such thing as a shortcut. Uh, 
if there was a, a shortcut, just becomes a standard way of doing things, doesn't it? Surely. So there's no such thing as a shortcut in something like boxing. Um, there's a direct path. There's the quickest possible way to go from a position of not having a skill or a, or a capability or being able to use a set of tactics to being, to having that skill, having that capability, being able to use that set of tactics. There's a direct path, but that direct path is hard. It's not easy. It never will be. Um, you've got to show up. You've got to work hard. You've got to do the deliberate, determined work. So like what we did before on that drill, day in, day out over a number of weeks, executing drills like that as a part of your training in order to get fitter for the bags and, 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 and be, a better, be a better practitioner of, of boxing. Um, so yeah, don't seek shortcuts. Seek the direct path and work hard while doing it. If you want some structure of all of this, if you enjoy this type of coaching, then download my Beginner Boxer Toolkit book. You'll get lots of structure in there, lots of advice and clar clarity. Um, it's not just for beginners. It actually is stuff that is well worth um, understanding wherever you are on your journey. So, Beginner Boxer Toolkit. Otherwise, my name's Franz Sands, um, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.